Hi, in this video we will learn about the moments in statistics. What are moments actually? These are nothing but arithmetic means. Of what? Of the deviations in a distribution. Where from the deviations can be taken? They can be taken from the mean of the distribution or they can be taken from an arbitrary point of the distribution. Clear? Now, the next question is in how many forms the deviations can be had? The deviations may have with power 1, that is simply you are subtracting the data point from the mean or from some arbitrary point. The deviations may come with power 2. Generally, we call those as squared deviations. Deviations may come with power 3, that is cubed deviations, or it may come with power 4. There are deviations with more than power 4, but we are dealing with deviations up to power 4 because that will solve our purpose. Okay. Now, look at this second one this deviations with power 2 that is a square deviations if we take mean of those square deviations that is a moment because moment is actually the arithmetic means of deviations so when we take mean of the square deviations we get a moment and that moment is commonly known as variance so variance is actually a moment of square deviations that means the moment with order 2 or the power 2. Clear? So, arithmetic means of rth power of deviation taken from either mean or an arbitrary point of distribution are known as moments. This r may be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. And as I told you before, the value of r will be limited up to 4 in this video. Let's take an example. Take the mean of ages. Suppose there are 6 children and their ages are 5, 7, 3, 4, 9 and 8. And I ask you to go for the mean. So you add these numbers and divide it by 6. Now the question is, are these really mere numbers? I believe not. These are actually the deviations from some point. So 5 is a deviation from some point, 7 is a deviation of, from some point. Now what is that point? Actually the point is 0 by default. I will explain you this using this figure. This one is a point 0 and here is your 5. And you can see that this 5 is actually deviated from the point 0. So this is the deviation of your 5 from the origin 0. Here is a point 7. Now this 7 also is a deviation from the origin 0. The same thing goes with the other points. So what we are doing here is that we are actually adding the deviations, not the mere numbers. So 5 minus 0, 7 minus 0, 3 minus 0, 4 minus 0 like that. And definitely we will get 6. So, here we go with the mean here, that is 6, and this mean is also a deviation from this point 0. So, it is better to replace this mean of ages with this statement that mean of deviations from the origin, right? Now, we go with the mean of the deviations from the arithmetic mean. We will use this example again. Now, we have got this mean at 6 here. And we will take the deviations of these points. So here we go with the deviation of 5 from 6. Here we go with the deviation of 7 from 6. And this is the deviation of 3, this is the deviation of 4, deviation of 9 and deviation of 8. So you can see that there are deviations on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. So let us go with the statement like this. That 5 minus 6, 7 minus 6, 3 minus 6 like that in place of minus 0. Because this time, we are taking the deviations from the mean. So we are trying to subtract 6 from all these points. And what we get? We get 0. Why? Because this 6 is actually a mean deviation 
from all other deviations. So it has some deviations on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side and the summation of all the deviations on the left hand side is actually cancelling the summation of all the divisions on the right hand side. So that is why you are getting zero here. So whenever you go with the mean of deviations from the arithmetic mean with power 1, then every time you will get zero here. Now let us go with the square deviations from this arithmetic mean. That means whatever the deviations we have got in the previous section here, we will square these deviations and let's see what happens. So 5 minus 6 squared, 7 minus 6 squared, 3 minus 6 squared. So all these deviations are squared now. And what we get? We get 4.67. So this is actually the mean of the squared deviations from the arithmetic mean. So as we have mentioned before, that this is nothing but the variance. So a variance is actually the mean of the squared deviations of the arithmetic mean. That means is the moment of order 2 about the arithmetic mean. Clear? Now the question is why we are learning moments? That is means of the divisions. By getting the moments, you can describe the characteristic of a distribution. Also you can summarize several statistical measures such as measures of central tendency, then your variation, your skewness and kurtosis. That is why we are learning moments. Now there are three types of moments we got. The first one is moments about arbitrary point, the second one is moments about origin and the third one is moments about mean. We start with the moments about arbitrary point A and we have got two types of data that is ungrouped data and grouped data. So for ungrouped data we have n observations x1 to xn and we got the moments about arbitrary point A as if you have zero order moment then you have the power raised to 0 here. So you write m0 dashed equal to summation of i equal to 1 to n. You take the deviation xi minus a and you put the power as 0 here and divide it by n and you get definitely 1 here because this xi minus a raised to 0 will give you 1 and you sum these ones n times so you'll get n on the numerator and you have the denominator as n so that will give you 1. Now the dashed here is used for those moments about arbitrary point or origin. Now whenever we will deal with moments about mean, the dashed will be not there. Okay? So we will simply write m0 in that case. Okay? Now we go with the first order moment and we have this m1 dashed equal to the summation of this deviation raised to power 1. So this suffix 1 here will signify that it is moment of order 1. And this dashed here will signify that this moment is about arbitrary point or origin, right? So these are the other moments up to fourth order. And every time you replace these powers from 0 to 1 to 2, 3 and 4 like that. And it change the suffix 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the suffix will signify the order of the moment, okay? So if you generalize, then you will get the rth order moment will be looking like this, that mr dashed will be the deviation raised to r and its summation up to n and this summation will be divided by n. So you change the value of r from 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 like that and you change the power here also from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and you'll get the moment of that order. Okay. Now we go with the group data. In the group data you have k values from x1 to xk and if you have class intervals, then you can have the mean values of those class intervals. And since this is a group data, so these values will be associated with the corresponding frequencies from f1 to fk, right? Now the moments about the arbitrary point of a group data will be like this. In case of zero order moment, you will have m0 dash equal to the summation of i equal to 1 to k. And you have this frequency, the corresponding ith frequency, fi, multiplied by the deviation from the point xi minus a and it is raised to 0. So this time you are having the deviations multiplied by the corresponding frequencies. So if you have this summation and divide it by n for the zero order moment, you will have 1 here as before. Now where from you will get this n? 
actually it is a summation of all the frequencies you got. So n is a summation of i equal to 1 to k f i. So these are the other higher order moments up to 4. So every time you replace this suffix with 1, 2, 3 and 4 and change the power here and you will get the corresponding moment. So this time also we generalize the rth order moment like this that mr dashed equal to summation of i equal to 1 to k the corresponding fi times the deviation raised to power r and the whole summation will be divided by n to get the mean. We go with the moments about origin now. Actually there is no difference between this arbitrary point and the moments of origin. You just put 0 in the arbitrary point A and you will get the moments about origin. So actually moments about origin are the special cases of moments about arbitrary point. Okay. So for ungrouped data you have the same situation x1 to xn observations and now you are going to find out the moments about origin. So just like before you will have zero order moment and m0 dashed and you will have this deviation as xi minus 0 in place of a. So actually you are putting the value 0 to a to get the moments about origin. So the rest of the thing will be same as it is with the moments about arbitrary point only in place of a there will be 0. Okay. So the first order moment will be going like this m1 dashed equal to the summation of i equal to 1 to n and you have this xi minus 0 raised to 1 by n. Now what you have got here? Actually you have got the mean, that means the arithmetic mean of those observations, rather say of those deviations, right? The other moments will be like this and here also if we generalize then you will get the rth order moment as mr dashed equal to summation of i equal to 1 to n and this time the minus a will be not there because the a is 0. So xi will be raised to r and this whole summation will be divided by n. Now we go for the group data. The same situation x1 to xk the values and in case of class intervals you take the mid values and these f1 to fk are the corresponding frequencies. So the zero order moment will be like this. Just in place of a, you have put zero here. And for n, we have already discussed that it is a summation of all the frequencies. For the other higher moments up to four, you will have the equations like this. And if we generalize, then you will have this rth order moment will be mr dashed equal to summation of i equal to one to k and fi times xi raised to r because this minus a will be not there because here also a is 0. So the whole summation will be divided by n and you will get the mean of the deviation and that is your rth order moment. I repeat that this moments about origin is a special case of the moments about arbitrary point. That means whenever the arbitrary point becomes 0, it becomes the moment of about origin, right? That is why we are writing this m dashed in case of moments about arbitrary point as well as moments about origin. Now the last one we go with the moments about mean. These moments are also called central moments and we go with ungrouped data the situation will be same and we have the zero order moment here m0 equal to summation of i equal to 1 to n and the deviation will be now from the mean. So that is why we have written xi minus x bar. At this time it is raised to 0 because this is a zero order moment. And the whole summation will be divided by n and you will get 1 here also. You notice one thing that here the dashed symbol is missing to signify that we are dealing with moments about mean. Now we go for the first order moment. And this time we get this m1 equal to the summation of i equal to 1 to n and the deviation will be xi minus x bar. Now it will be raised to 1 and divided by 0 and definitely you will get 0 because you have already seen in one of the previous slides that the deviation raised to 1 if those deviations are added then it becomes 0. So these are the other moments you've got. So notice here the second order moment we have already discussed before 
that this m2 equal to this xi minus x bar raised to 2 that is this is a squared deviations and you sum it up and divide it by n to get the mean of those squared deviations and you will get this variance. So there is a third moment also this m3 that is the deviation is raised to power 3 and the fourth order is raised to power 4. So if you generalize then you will get this rth order moment will be summation of i equal to 1 to n and this deviation will be from the mean that is xi minus x bar and it is raised to power r according to your moment order and divide the summation by n. So you go with the group data is very similar x1 to xk and if the corresponding frequencies are f1 to fk so zero order moment will be looking like this m0 equal to summation of i equal to 1 to k fi and this time you take the deviation xi minus x bar raised to 0 and divide it by n and it goes to 1. So the other order moments will be looking like this. So here also the second order moment you see that it is a variance and the first order moment is equivalent to 0. So you generalize then this thing will come up. So you have seen that the moments are actually nothing but the mean of the deviations right so the deviations may be in different form it may be squared it may be it may be cubed or it may be power to one so in different forms of deviations you will have different orders of moments in the next video we will deal with the relation between the moments about mean and the moments about arbitrary point